The Mia Motley government presents its report card on its one-year anniversary in office. That's the focus of your Barbados Today morning news update for Monday, June 3rd, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. Harrison's cave is being divested. Minister of Tourism Kerry Simmons made the announcement last night as he addressed the Barbados Labour Party's BLP public meeting at Carlisle Car Park to mark the Mia Motley-led government's first year in office. We have taken a decision that on the basis of the evaluation of tenders that were put in, it went out to tender. Six people tendered. We have evaluated the tenders. There is one entity, one, that stands out like a beacon in the night. And their commitment as part of it is that they will put six, over six million dollars of investment into Harrison's Cave and they will offer the credit union movement of this country a stake in the Harrison's Cave so that they become owners of the patrimony of the land. Meantime, Minister of Health Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick is calling for common sense to prevail in negotiations on the two 24-hour polyclinics. The bricks were put on the June 1st start date after concerns from nurses. While he didn't go into details, citing the ongoing negotiations, Minister Bostick explained some of the areas that have been resolved. Addressing the rally, he touted the benefits of the initiative. And I say let common sense and good judgment prevail because the persons who are going to be attending the 24-hour service, nurses, unions, ministry, minister, there can be our brothers and sisters, our parents. One day there will be our children, our cousins, and maybe, maybe one day it may be us attending this service. And all I'm asking is for common sense to prevail. This is a good service that we are providing. Minister Bostick also informed the meeting that a decision will be made soon on a draft policy that will allow non-Barbadians improved access to public health care. This policy would allow you to access health coverage, including pharmaceuticals, medication. And once it is approved by next week, I will issue a directive to all polyclinics and all hospitals outlining every inch of this policy. Scores of BLP supporters and others, some carrying party paraphernalia, attended the estimated five-hour-long public meeting. With the country's economic problems dominating the attention of the administration during its time in office, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Cattle, declared that Barbados is back. This time next year, we are going to see growth. This time next year, we are going to see jobs. This time next year, we are going to see opportunities and investment for people to be working again, for people to be able not just to get a salary, but to be able to create wealth for their children and the generations to come again. We are going to see Barbadians benefiting more and more and moving to that point where every Bajan can be given the chance to be the best that they can be. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbados is back. Meantime, the Minister of Agriculture says he won't be instituting a ban on the importation of chicken wings, at least not without an alternative. As he delivered his report card, Minister Indoware also sent a message to CEO of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul. Where I understand that Barbados must find a way to participate and be part of the economic structure of this country, I refuse to pursue any conversation where I am going to stop, reduce, ban chicken wings or coming to Barbados or turkey wings unless you can give me the alternative. I have a very good open relationship with the poultry farmers. I want James Paul to know that when he is constantly making this noise about chicken wings, you got to understand the poor people that you claim to be part of a party that said that you stand for poor people and that you want to ask me to come and tell Barbadians you can no longer sell chicken wings. I can't do it unless there's an alternative. And I'm sure the poultry farmers understand me. 
I will now seek to consult with the dairy farmers and the beef producers of Barbados. But my conversation will not change in this country. $70,000, that's how much have been paid back so far to the trust loan fund. Just under 2,000 businesses benefited from the fund that was established six months ago. In his report, Minister of Small Business and Entrepreneurship Dwight Sutherland said many of the beneficiaries are women. Those persons were so happy that tonight I can report that 114 successful applicants have begun to repair their loans. And indeed we have, we can account for $70,000 thus far in receipts as a result of persons who have begun to repair their loans. So I want to thank you, the people of this country. We trust you. You trust yourself. And I want to thank you for being honest. Don't mind the last government who claimed to think that the people would not do this and that. And don't mind the critics who are talking about $5,000 is not enough. But I want to go a bit further. Because we have, we recognize, and when I look around this audience tonight, I see women mainly women and we recognize that you women have been leading families in this country some of you are single parents and i'm proud to report that half the laws that have been distributed have gone to females in this country on to other news now consumers are paying more for petroleum products the increase in prices took effect at midnight gasoline increased by five cents selling at three dollars and 93 cents per liter the price of diesel went up by six cents and is retailing at three dollars and fourteen cents per liter, while kerosene is now one dollar and forty-three cents per liter, a two cents increase. The prices of liquid fried petroleum gas also went up. The one hundred pound cylinder is being sold at one hundred and fifty dollars and seventy-one cents. The twenty-five pound cylinder, forty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents. The twenty-two pound cylinder. $39.57, and the 20-pound cylinder is now $35.97. There's regional and international news after this short break. In Jamaica, the body of late former Prime Minister Edward Siaga arrived in the country yesterday. It was received by the government with the appropriate honor guard in place. On hand were the Governor General, the Prime Minister, members of Cabinet, Opposition Leader, members of Parliament and others. Siaga, Jamaica's fifth Prime Minister, died in a hospital in the U.S. on May 28 at the age of 89. He's been accorded a state funeral. And on the international scene, mass protests have been planned for U.S. President Donald Trump's state visit to the U.K. just a year after the giant Trump baby blimp sparked controversy in London. Organizers of the protests from the Together Against Trump organization say protests are planned at Buckingham Palace today when the president will be attending a state banquet with the Queen and tomorrow when he'll be visiting Prime Minister Theresa May. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbetastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.